Hey everyone, it's Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Okay, so on today's show, we're going to be talking about something right up my alley. We're going to be talking about branding. Um, so we've asked people that are in the group if they'd supply us with some logos or branding or packaging, and we're going to be just going through them, ripping through them like we've done in past episodes. People have uh, really enjoyed these. They've given us a lot of feedback if we could do it again. So we have a returning guest, Michael Kurtz. And if you haven't heard, uh, when it comes to creative ventures, our guest has done it all from TV, video games, marketing, from tech startups. I just talked to him about this. Um, I questioned him about it just before we got on, but he's even worked to create art for patents. We'll talk about that. He's a graduate of the Art Institute of Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh with a degree in industrial design. He studies and understands how cons the consumer thinks. He's perfected ways to create your brand so it gets it grabs the consumer's attention. And if you've ever heard him speak on the podcast before, that's exactly what he does. So we're going to welcome Michael Kurtz. But before we do that, I just wanted to give a big thank you to our sponsor, Global Wired Advisors, a leading digital investment bank focused on optimizing the business sales experience. For more information, please visit globalwiredadvisors.com. All right. Where is the man, the myth, the boy? I assume you're talking about me and not Michael. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Kels? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I am doing good. So we're seeing right. you this week and fantastic. Nope, actually, uh, probably Thanksgiving, maybe, I guess. All right, okay. But yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll figure we'll something out. We'll work it out. We'll reunite at some point. <laughs> um, okay, so yes, this is a special episode uh, for our Beard Nation family here. This is one of my favorite episodes that we do. Um, so basically, if you have a logo, uh, slogan, if you have packaging and you want a second opinion on it, uh, you can send us your uh, files, your logos over to k at lunchwithnorm.com. Uh, we already have a couple uh, submissions already, but you can send us those. I'll upload them and then we're going to share them and do a little feedback and critique on them. So that's k at lunchwithnorm.com. I'm going to put it in the comment section. Um, so just send it over. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. We promise we won't be too mean <laughs> this is uh michael just will. I, I will yeah michael I michael is yeah we can't speak for michael but <laughs> me and norm right? <laughs> but anyways um join our facebook group if you haven't already that is lunch with norm amazon fba and e-commerce collective it's a great place for the community to me ask questions share some pictures of uh norm's childhood <laughs> i think i saw some photos uh circling around which are pretty funny um and if you're interested in highlights or uh, full episodes, go over to our YouTube channel. That's uh, Norman Farrar. Or if you search Lunch with Norm, you'll be able to find it. And that's it. We've got big episodes tomorrow or next week. Kevin King. We've got our Beard Nation um, appreciation episode as well with our guests or with our Beard Nation members. So that's going to be fun. And we can just jump into it today. Okay. So if you do have any questions or comments, just throw it over to the right-hand comment section. And we can sit back, relax, grab that cup of coffee, and enjoy the episode. Welcome, Michael. Hi, everybody. It is a pleasure to be back. Thank you so much for having me. Has Kelsey sent out your Lunch with Norm mug? No, no. <laughs> oh, we'll have to get him on that. You've been but on so many times. I thought we yeah. would do a, you know, a cheers here. Listen, if I have one, I will make sure that I drink out of it every time I'm on the show. Very good. Okay. Kelsey, get on that. All right. So, Michael, you've been on the show uh, a few times. Uh, yes. Why don't you just tell uh, people a little bit more about you? Um, I might have missed something. Uh, I'm just looking at some of these comments. Actually, uh, I'm not sure who AMZ Elite is. I'm Kelsey might, but that was kind of an interest. That's a, that's great. Thank you for that comment. Whoever AMZ Elite is. So you know what? Michael, I just want to step back one second. Sure. This is why we do these giveaways. 
you know, we we think that these giveaways and you know your giveaway today is a one hour consult so people love one it. year consult oh yeah it's a membership the membership, yeah, it's membership. The membership. Yeah. that's right that's another great giveaway i thought it was the one hour it's a one year membership into your group but these these the people and the quality of the the, the these prizes or giveaways they're fantastic. Like, I really like seeing that. That makes my day when AMZ Elite says that, you know, it was a game changer having uh, their meeting with Talor. So um, anyways, just wanted to just give uh, a shout out to AMZ Elite. Now we can get back. Didn't mean to interrupt. Let's talk a bit about you, sir. Sure. Sure. So, I mean, yeah, you basically covered everything in that in that list. It's it's. It's very comprehensive. It's almost as though I wrote it myself. <laughs> I think possibly. <laughs> anyway, I do still want to ask you about the artwork. Yeah, yeah. So no. that came up there like patenting artwork. Let's talk about that before we jump into anything. Yeah. So so it's interesting. So when obviously when you create a product and you want to get it patented, you hire a patent attorney. With that patent attorney, you usually get an, an illustrator, someone who's going to sit down and draw what the product looks like, how it works, you know, flow charts as to, you know, turn this knob and this thing happens or push this button and this thing happens. Well, obviously somebody has to illustrate all of those things and the patent uh, office, obviously it's different for every country, but the patent office has specific rules. Um, it's, it's actually very specific. So much like regular drafting, it has specific line weights, means specific things, specific patterns, so if you want to show something's glass, you have to show it with a specific pattern. You use a specific kind of shading to illustrate that something's round. You know, if, you, if you're showing a cylinder, for example, you have to put this they, specific line weights and specific things. And if I can say the word specific eight more times. So specifically, <laughs> what are you talking about? No. <laughs> so, but yeah, so, you know, you have to create this this it's a combination of illustration and drafting that shows measurements. It shows um, there's numbers that point to things that say, you know, 89 a is the battery cover. 89 B is the spring that holds the battery in place so that when the patent office gets it, the examiner can read through and say, Oh, I understand what all these parts are. I understand what their function is because then those numbers that 89 a directly references something in the written description that says, and it's very legal ease described, right? So it's like, if you've read any of your contracts or terms and conditions, it's, you know, it's the user here within referred to as, so it's written the same way. So it'll say, you know, object 89, a shall therefore be known as the battery cover. And, and, you know, so the, the writer gives you, this description and then you have to draw it and you work with the client and it's, it's fascinating. And, and I'm, I've always loved patent art. And so to be able to, to have been given numerous opportunities to actually sit down and draw it was, I mean, it's just a highlight of my career. Oh, you know, uh, at the uh, billion dollar seller summit, we were out at a dinner one night and I got to uh, sit beside destiny Washam, who I, I don't know if you know her. She, she incredible lady. Uh, she hurt my head. She started saying, <laughs> she started talking about NFTs and yeah. this one's going for a million dollars. This one's yeah. going for 15 million. This one's going. And it looked like, like a kid's drawing. I am. That's when I, I said, I realized that there is a major gap from old to the new generation because I couldn't get my head, it hurt. I went back to yeah. the hotel room going, I really don't get it. I don't get it now. I tried to, to, to you know, look for it. Anyways, NFTs, if anybody can explain it to me in old man language, please do. It's, it's kind of, I'm going to simplify this. Don't get me going. I don't want any headaches. Yeah, I'm going to simplify <laughs> this almost to an extreme. But it's essentially, you're... you're essentially buying a digital right to it, right? So in other words, a digital copy slash digital ownership. And again, I'm simplifying it probably way more 
so I know I'll get people in the comments going, well, that's not exactly how it works. And you're right. But like I said, I'm trying to keep Norm's head from exploding. So, but essentially you're buying into the picture that someone drew. And interestingly enough, that there was a huge boom, right? So when this first started happening, that's when stuff was really going for, you know, the million dollars. It's, it's settled down a bit now. I mean, you can still get a lot of money off of things. Um, I was just reading an article about a 16 year old kid who, um, you know, he was, I don't know. He's, he's, he sold a couple pictures and he made like $60,000 off of it. Um, but essentially it's, it's it's like cryptocurrency kind of yeah. stuff you know where it's it's real but it's not real but it's digital and you know it, it it works with a lot of that stuff so it's it's interesting um michael had, my my head's starting it's, to hurt it's, yeah, it's it, head, it is yeah. starting to hurt so we're going to change topics but at Perfect. some point <laughs> at some point we're going to have a top a, a talk about nfts and we'll have a few people on and we'll get this thing so i can actually understand it yeah but absolutely let's talk more my language i know about brands and yes brands can be digital they are absolutely. i understand that point but let's talk a bit more i wanted to talk today uh, a little bit about crms before sure. and we are going to get into you know um uh, critiquing the the logos and that'll be a bit later on but what about CRMs? Like, let's talk about CRMs for Amazon, Etsy. How do you use them? Sure. So, yeah, let's dig so, in there. So, uh, I, I'm going to I'm going to pretend that your that your listeners don't know anything about them. I'm sure some people are using them. I'm sure some people aren't. So, forgive me if I speak in simplicities that you go. Well, I already knew that. I'm just starting from the basics. So, um, essentially. The CRM is incredibly important for anyone who's running a, any kind of digital store. So whether it's through Shopify, Etsy, Amazon, um, I'm not going to get into the details of setting it up because they're all different. And that what, oh, Sorry, what does CRM stand for? Oh, sorry, customer retention management. So it's essentially collecting emails so that you can reach out to people. And there's a difference between that and spamming them and... Mm -hmm. So I want to talk a little bit about how to not spam people, but actually send them content they'd be interested in. So we'll, we'll get into that in a second. Um, but yeah, so there's different ways to sign up. Etsy has different rules than Amazon. Amazon has different rules. Obviously, if you set up your own Shopify, that's your content. Or maybe if you set it up through WordPress or something like that, WooCommerce, like those are your stores so you can make the rules. So again, there's all these different ways to do it and I'm not going to bore you by getting into it. Instead, I'm going to talk about how to use it so that you don't get people going, Oh, this is just spam. I don't want to read it. And the easiest way to do that is whatever your, whatever your content is, I'm sure you have a product that you want to move. You're just about to launch a product um, maybe you have a monthly thing. Uh, uh, I'll use an example of, you know, bakeries will have like a cupcake of the month, something like that. Um, maybe if you have, if you sell jewelry, like if you hand make jewelry, maybe you have, oh, we're, we, we've, we've made this custom, you know, necklace for, for Thanksgiving or for Christmas or whatever. And so you can use the CRM to push that out because essentially if you're relying on people to just go to your website or stumble across your store and say, Oh, I'd like one of those. You're missing a huge population of customers. But if someone buys from you before they, they're obviously happy with the product. So by capturing their email and then continuing to send them essentially digital flyers and saying, Hey, did you know that in the month of October, we're going to be offering this or in the month of October, we're launching our new product. You can use that to really hype something up and say, Hey, there's two weeks till the launch of our product and get people excited because most people, they forget. Like that's what we do. We get busy. Oh, I, I got to take the cat to the vet. I got to go over here. I got to do this. The kids got to go to school. And we forget that, Oh yeah, I wanted to buy this product. And then it's just gone. And so by sending them, 
you know, this drip campaign of a month out, you send them an email, two weeks out, you send them an email the day before the launch, you send out an email. It reminds people, even if they don't open it, just seeing it in their inbox of, Hey, don't forget we're launching this product in three days, keeps it fresh in their mind. And so part of it, part of the way you keep it from being spam is you have a clear and concise email title, right? You know, it's lunch with norms, launching its, its new logo critique in three days, NFT, the new NFT, right? The new NFT is coming out in three days. And, and so, like I said, you're able to drip it and these people have purchased from you. If, if it's Amazon or Shopify, you can also just say, Hey, enter your, enter your email for a 15% coupon, right? Now they've, they've given that email to you willing you. You're not spamming them because they've said it's okay for you to send me emails. And if your email is an opt out, opt out at the bottom, then anytime they don't want them, they can just say, you know what, never mind, stop sending me okay. emails. Hold it a sec. Sure. Um, so go back to how do you create this as a, a clean opt in? So without going to, without making this spam. So sure. you, you create a clean or a clear message on, in sure. the subject. And yes. then what? So, uh, um, you'll obviously we all get the emails that, you know, it says lunch with norm. And then it says the, this guest is coming up in three days, right? So that's clear. If I don't open the email, I know what the email says. Mm -hmm. So if I'm like, Oh, that's really interesting. I want to know more about this guest on norm show. So then I click on the email to read more. And I'll skim through it just to say like, okay, what's the name of the guest? Are there photos or is there this, is there that, or is there something else? And, and we, we approach it with this kind of three layers of first, I'm going to skim it. Then I'm going to kind of read it. And then if I'm still interested, then I'll actually read the entire thing from start to finish. And so with that, you want to, you want to highlight the most important things first. I'm sure we've all gotten the email or the newsletter where every three paragraphs, there's a huge title that says what the next three paragraphs says, right? Or there's a tagline or a quote that's something that like, Oh, that's really interesting. This person feels this way or, you know, we've, we've achieved 10% more sales in the past year. Oh, I wonder why I'd like to read more. So it's these attention grabbing titles that keep us reading through the email. But again, that title before we even open the email is going to tell us the core of what we need to know, which is lunch with Norm is going to have an amazing guest next week. And you want to tune in to see, see who it is. It's a special guest. We're having David Letterman on, you know, something like that. Yeah. Uh, he's coming on in two months. Awesome. That, I, I, I hope, I seriously hope that's true because I think the two of you would be awesome together. <laughs> not just because you both have cool beards <laughs> i had my beard before his yeah I, yeah he listen he you inspired him yeah yeah that's right that's <laughs> what he said now you know i don't know if you realize this but exactly what you're doing with sending out these emails telling people that you have a product uh launch amazon is allowing you to do this direct to your um your followers and yep. to your repeat buyers so uh They've been trying to build up this brand community for some time, um, and they've they've done a good job. So starting out <laughs> with, uh, well, they had a horrible social platform called Spark, didn't fly. Um, it, yeah. it just didn't fly. It was just, uh, it, it was just too. You know what? How can you get more narcissistic than you know <laughs> than what? <laughs> And what social media is, you know, you're taking right. selfies of yourself. Well, this was just too narcissistic. So it collapsed. It was showing people, you know, you, what you bought, um, yeah. you know, with selfies of what you bought, basically. Anyway, yeah. they changed it over to this new platform post, which is fantastic. Um, you know, some people say they love it. Some people say they hate it. If you use it properly, it's, um, it's fantastic. And then you've got live and then you've got the follow button on your store. Soon right. these posts are going to be on your listing. Anyways, anybody who follows you. And if you go into your, if you're brand registered, you go to brands, customer experience, 
you set up a mail campaign, they will get in the information about new launches that you're doing. Yeah, it's the CRM is actually built in, right? And it's doing the job that we couldn't do, which was to reach out and target our audience, which I think is fantastic, right? And and what's nice is they also have tools where if you like, say you're selling on Amazon, but you also have your own store, your own website, like you can connect all of that together through their tools to say, okay, you bought through my Amazon store, but I'm going to add you to my CRM through my website. So again, you can use services like MailChimp or any of the hundreds of other CRMs out there that you can just, like I said, send it out through their email. So you're not trying to balance, well, I got to send it through Amazon and I got to send it through my website. You can combine them all, which is a huge time saver. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So with these CRMs, what you, you've used them on Amazon. You just told us about how you're using them with Amazon. Uh, you also mentioned something about Etsy. Yeah. Uh, I haven't done anything with Etsy. Can you explain a bit about that? Or if there's any, any other um, shopping platforms that you're, you're having success with. Sure. So, well, Etsy has, Etsy's kind of strict and they have some specific rules of, they don't necessarily want you capturing emails straight from the buyers. Um, so they've actually kind of blocked it, which some people are complaining about. Some people don't care about, uh, but there are, there's some ways around it where you can, obviously you can post, create a website or a landing page and say, Hey, if you like our stuff, you'd like to join our, our mailing list, go to our website and sign up for that. So there, there are ways to do it. Unfortunately, because of how they have it set up, because they, they're trying to respect their customers' privacy, which I get, um, you know, they've added a couple extra steps, but the good news is if somebody follows those steps to sign up for your thing, then you know they're really interested in what you're selling. So it's a great, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> it is a great, um, you know, system to say like, are people interested in what I'm doing? Well, yeah, because they went from Etsy to my website, to the email form and signed up. And, you know, now I know that they're interested in what I'm doing and and how often things are going to get sent out and things like that. So, you know, and I, I've just got to say this, it's a little bit down a different rabbit hole, but in the Centurion League, so that's the, the, the mentoring program that Tim Jordan and I have, there's a lady in the group, um, Jody, and she started, uh, she started Etsy last year. She is absolutely killing it with no Fantastic. inventory, zero inventory. So it's all custom made orders? It's all print on demand. You upload the designs, people print them out. And That's anyways, she, she's still on Amazon, but she's absolutely killing it on Etsy. And it's That's just fantastic. another, it's another way to make money. And I, yep. I am going to have somebody on to talk about Etsy um, in the future, but you know, it's just another option. Like Todd Snively was on talking about wholesale. He's killing it. Nine figures. He's selling nine figures in on Amazon through wholesale. Wow. But, so there's other options and that's what, sure. you know, basically what I wanted to talk about. All right, let's talk about, you know, why it's so important. Because how you know, if you think about it, how do you, if you want to buy something for let's say Mother's Day. Yep. You're going to go on and you're going to start scrolling through Mother's Day gifts, right? And then you scroll and you scroll and you scroll. But the first place you're going to look is Hey, there's an email here that said, looking for great Mother's Day gifts. Yes, I am. Click. Hey, there we go. Here's here's a direct link to a store that's selling Mother's Day gifts. That I've purchased from before, so I know that I like the quality of the store. I'm happy with the customer service, you know, obviously, because I've, I've bought from them. So it, it, it gives you, one, past experiences to act as a, a kind of a self-referral. But then it also acts as a reminder because with it not being a big box store, right? We're, we've transitioned away from everything being big box stores where I got to get my mom a Mother's Day gift. I'll drive down to the department store down the street. And now that's where I'll start. 
Now it's, I'm going to type it into Google. But if we have that link in email, in the email that came two months before, then a month before, then two weeks before, and you're going, oh, that's right. You know, here's this email reminding me, get something for Mother's Day. Don't forget. That's right. I better do it right now. Click on that link. And it's, it's, it's awesome because it allows you to directly talk to your customers when they're not expecting it and when they need it, if that makes sense. Yeah. And there are like a lot of people, including myself, I'm not a copywriter. You know, I'll, I'll get other people to write copy, <clears throat> but it's so important. The right words. I mean, that, that's what sells. Absolutely. There's a great book called uh, Words That Sell, Phrases That Sell yep. on Amazon. Um, I have it. I mean, I flip through it. I almost have to get another copy because uh, I use it so often. But the other thing you can do, if you want to go into like digital marketer, uh, great organization, great training, they have a um, blog, like just go to their blog articles or free blog articles on how to write great copy for uh, emails. Yep. Or they have a course in there that you can take and it doesn't cost much at all. You, you join or you can get it for free. You look at it, you can try to do it yourself. And also this is, if you, if you want to write one thing down, this is fantastic. Uh, Brad Kalen, he came out with uh, something called automatic script writer. And I believe that's what it was called. Um, and we'll post it later, but if you type in the information that you want, it's, it's, it's a bit of AI. It'll actually form the email for you and it's pretty good quality. I'm talking about nice. very, very good quality. Right. And it'll write the scripts like the, you know, the, oh, you, you have to have, you know, three, um, uh, like a, th a three or four or five, six s a sequence email. Here it is. Here's the time period just sent it out. It's all done for you. It's fantastic. And it'll even come up with optional titles for you. So anyways, if you're not, if you're, if you don't quite feel on copy or if you don't want to hire somebody, that's another way of doing it. Yeah. Um, but check it out. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and stuff like that's always great. And, and if, if you don't feel comfortable with that, Google how to write a press release, because essentially that press release format is perfect for these kind of announcement emails, which is right. You have your opening sentence or the title of your email. Then you have a paragraph that basically elaborates the opening sentence. And then you have three paragraphs that elaborate on that paragraph. So it's because it goes from, if you read the title and you want to read the next thing, here's a little bit more detail. If you're still interested, here's a whole lot more detail, but right. essentially it's, it's repeating itself over and over and over again, right? It's here's the main point. Here's a little bit of elaboration. Here's a ton of elaboration. And so again, if you look up that format, that'll teach you how to write really successful emails just because that's, that's the way the professionals write them and, you know, to get them in uh, newspapers and magazines and even, on the news, you know, if, if, if once you, once you study the format a little bit, you'll recognize, wow, that that's a press release. Cause they right. said, they said the title, then they described it. Then they, then they cut to the anchor. Who's going to describe it further. So I just saw uh, Simon uh, has here. Uh, I got to put my reading glasses on. There we go. What is you it? Want me to read it? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. From Simon, do you use CRM tools such as HubSpot? Yes. I, I personally use MailChimp, um, but they're all good. I mean, they all, they all, essentially they all do the same thing. It's kind of the added, the added pieces that you get, um, for the higher end things may, I mean, MailChimp starts at free if you just want to learn how to use it. And then as you realize, Oh, I need one of these, or I need one of those, then you can walk your way up their subscriptions. Um, so that way, if you're just starting out, it's not, an expense at all other than the little bit of time it takes and they all integrate with your different systems, whether it's directly or through something like Zapier, um, you know, where you can program your zap. So if somebody does this, it automatically does that. And then you can schedule your emails to go out. So it's not even like, well, I want this to go out Friday at five o'clock. So I have to sit there at Friday. No, you can 
You can write it Monday, schedule it to go out Friday at five o'clock and trust that it will. It allows you to filter people. So you can send an email to people who have never purchased and a different email to people who have, who have purchased. Right. You can right? it's, you can target your demographics because I'm pretty sure everybody has different demographics in their target markets of, you know, you're going to sell this product to someone who's looking for a mother's day gift, but you're going to sell this product for someone who's looking for a father's day gift. And so you, you, you can collect the information when they go to your website or what, or from their profile accounts or wh wherever you're getting that information, it allows you to say, okay, this person is never going to buy this product, but this person is only going to buy this product. So I'm going to send them this email and I'm going to send these people that email and and so you're not you're not spamming them by sending them email that they go I'm not interested in this I'm not interested in this I'm not interested in this never mind I don't want to get emails from these people anymore it's wow every email I get from this company is something that I would at least consider buying yeah or or have a hook I I know with um, our private label Legion emails we have a hook and that's every every Thursday I have no clue what this is. But Kelsey and Eric put together these dumb photos of Tim and I as Ernie and Bert or, you know, and, and every, it's just a hook. So people look forward to them. You know, they yep. open them, which keeps our open rate up, which I like. Yep. And hopefully they read the content. Yep. I, I want to expand on something though. So you can go to uh, companies like Constant Contact, Active Manager. Uh, the one we use is the same thing, MailChimp. Yep. Don't do it. Do not do it. Like if you've got 250 emails or 500 emails, don't send it through a regular email campaign. If you if you're on a shared host like a HostGator or something like that, you will not only get black blacklisted, could yep. get blacklisted, but you'll bring down everybody else on that shared server. <laughs> So you won't be, you know, uh, yeah. you like they're not going to be happy campers, and you definitely won't be. Um, but it's a, like people don't understand that you know that SMTP, like their outgoing server, is very important. And Mailchimp has strict rules. Like if they see, like we've been flagged, you know, oh yeah, we better change that. Or if all of a sudden you get a higher spam rate, they'll notify you. Right. Um, and even if you want to, this is just in general with general email. Um, I will use G Suite. Um, I'll use a Mandrel, which is uh, uh, Mailchimp's. Uh, it, it it just helps you white label your um, your emails, so you get into the inbox rather than getting into the spam. Right. It, it costs a little bit, um, but Mandrel's an awesome. Uh, uh, SMTP server for your emails if you're just sending them out. Like for me, sometimes, like Shane talked to me once, Shane's uh, Shane Oglo, and he's saying all of our um, emails are going into spam. We're missing out. People aren't getting them. Well, I don't know why, but we, then we switched it over uh, to, you know, to a different service, got it off the um, shared email server, and it worked like a charm. So be very careful because if you are sending out a lot of emails, you could get flagged. Yep. Okay. Well, and, and and even on top of that, if you're depending on who you're sending them to, you know, it, it becomes numb, right? Right. Uh, as the as the recipient of those emails, if I get an email from you every day, I, I, I okay, yeah, I got another email. I don't care. And and I'm more likely to either say I'm sick of getting emails from you, you know, take me off your list. Or just I don't even notice when they come in, versus oh I got a I got an email from lunch from Norm. I wonder what's going on. Like why did he send me this email? He wouldn't have sent it to me if there wasn't something important in it, right? And then you open it up and you're like oh wow David Letterman is going to be on the show and they're really excited about it and they really want to promote it. Like okay yeah like wow that's that's actually worth you know me making sure that I don't accidentally schedule an appointment that day or whatever so that I can definitely tune in because it's going to be the best show ever, you know, that type of stuff. And, and like I said, it's the same thing of like, hey, Halloween's coming up. We've got our Halloween cupcake. Make sure you order yours before they sell out. You know, that's it's really important because I wouldn't have thought about a Halloween cupcake 
right? I, I might go to a Halloween party. I don't know. I, Maybe. Always, I always think of cupcakes. Yeah, me, well, me too. But, you know, but specifically Halloween, I might not. But, you know, like you're debating, oh, do I want to go to a thing? Eh, there's a party. I got to take something. You know, I don't want to just show up with a bag of chips. Uh, what do I do? Oh, well, look at this. There's cupcakes. Uh, you know what? Right. I'm going to order my cupcakes. I'll pick them up on the way to the party. And then it's done. And it's one thing off your checklist. And because I saw that email and it's, it's so, it's so helpful when it's warranted, right? Uh, there's so many things that I've bought because I've got an email for it, you know, yeah. either because I was going to buy it and then forgot about it or like, I don't know. I got to, I got, like I said, I got to buy my mom a mother's day gift and I'm not even sure where to start. Oh, look, I got an email from the place I bought her gift from last year. Or go to soap club, make fabulous soap. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, no, uh, I want to just let everybody know that we've got a great giveaway today. It's a one year membership in Michael's group. Um, and so if you're looking at that, just, uh, that's hashtag wheel of Kelsey. If you want to enter twice, uh, just mention or tag two people, uh, either on, uh, listening or outside of the lunch with Norm group. Okay. There was something else I wanted to talk about or mention. It was a discussion with NFT completely like messed you I up. <laughs> it completely messed me up. And I just keep looking at Simon's stuff. You know, he yeah. always messes me up, but, uh, Okay, so let's start talking about these logos. We might as well just jump into it. Let's Usually that it. takes a bit of time. Kelsey, do you have um, a few logos that came in? Oh, by the way, I know what it was. I wanted to ask anybody who's listening if they're using a CRM, if they're using the customer experience program or app that Amazon's uh, sent out, what is what have your experiences been? Love to hear from you. So uh, we have not, I have not on my uh, brands started to use it. It's still fairly new for us. We're still experimenting, but uh, I have plans on doing it. I'll tell you what our results are um, once we do get those back. But I'm more interested is, are you using the power of email? And like you just said, Michael, you know, you're missing out on so much if you're, if you're not using this, you know, it's subliminal. Uh, I remember going to work every day driving into Toronto and I had a 45 minute drive and I kept hearing the Saul from Saul Corman's. It was uh, for suits, right? Well, if I was going to go get a suit, I, it was Saul at Saul Corman's, you know, and that's what it was because I heard right. it so much. It wasn't, I wasn't looking anywhere else. That's the same thing with these emails. Right. Absolutely. So, anyway. Uh, okay. Kels, where are you? Did I, Okay, here we go. All right, so uh, again, if you have any uh, logos, branding that you want sent in or um, that you want reviewed, uh, send it over to us, k at lunchwithnorm.com, and we'll put it together and we'll give you a little, some feedback on it. So I have, let me just share my screen. We have some logos. We'll start at the top and I'm just going to go full screen here. All right, let me just go to the very first one. First one is Nutra Shifa, I believe it's pronounced. Um, this is a supplement company. We also have the packaging as well, the little bottle, if you want to see that. Yeah, let's see the so bottle. That... Oh, right, I'm, gonna let, I'm gonna let you lead with this. Oh, one. you're gonna let me lead? Yeah, yeah I, absolutely. All right. Well, listen, you're a hospitable host. Um, I, I like it. I, I think uh, when you when you show the bottle, could you scroll down to the bottle again? Yep. You get a better feel for it on the bottle, like actually in use. Um, but yeah, I like it. Um, you know it stands out. It's easy to read because in this image, it's really small and I know what it says. Um, I'm curious just to, I would be curious to know kind of the, the motivation behind it. Um, like if there's any specific meaning to any part of it other than just, you know, the vibe that it's giving off.
<laughs> okay. So while we're waiting for that, anything else to say on the bottle or the logo? No. Um, like I said, it's it's clearly already in use. So, you know, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to start nitpicking like little changes because, you know, that, that requires a whole lot of printing and <laughs> yeah. ordering new, new labels and things like that. Um, you know, but, but anything that any changes that I would see, I would, would be nitpicky, you know, yeah, like stuff that honestly, at the end of the day, I don't think would, would warrant a reprint as to some logos that I've seen where it's just, I mean, I've, I've said to people like, you, you got to change it. You got to update it. Cause it's not working. Right. I think this one works. It's comfortable. I think it gives off the vibe that, like I said, when you see it on the bottle and you see the, the, the design of the labels, it's, it's a very smooth transition from the logo to the rest of the label. I get it's calming. Um, like I said, when it's scaled down, it's easy to read. You know, it doesn't, there's no part of it that feels unbalanced to me where it's, you know, my eye wants to stay on the left side or the right side or the top or the bottom. It, it just, yeah, I, I would, I would say, I would say yay to this one. Okay. Um, I'm in the middle. So with, with this one, um, what I like, especially cause it's a health and wellness sort of thing that you've used green and blue. Um, I don't know, and this is a nitpick, but if the blue should be just a, a little bit different color, but, uh, and this is already established. So this is not horrible. It's not bad. You know, it's a, it's, it's fine. The logo is fine. So don't freak out if I make these suggestions, but for me, I would have made the S thicker. You could do the same style. I would have probably made Nutra, um, Nutra Shifa, that font a little bit different, uh, because it is very thin, especially take a look at the F like when you, when, and when you scale that down, now, when you go to the bottle, that's a different story. I think I can give you a couple, or at least a couple of points here. Kels, could you go down? Yep. Yeah. There you go. So if you notice, you can't read the logo. It's very, well, you can still read it, but I know what it says. What I would do is I would bring this out to the right side and to the left side. And I think you'd have plenty of um, space to have the logo increase. I mean, that's what you're, you're promoting. You're promoting that you're promoting the black seed oil and you got a lot of stuff that I, I don't think legally has to be there. So I'd rather see that you've got your logo and your black seed oil. And maybe if there's, I mean, there's a weight count and whatever, I mean, that's on there, but all this other stuff, you can, you can utilize the backside. Um, if you have it in a package, I mean, you could use it for that, but um, that's my only comment here. I like the bottle. I like the use of, you know, the, the black and, um, the black in the, um, in the black seed oil with the, yeah. um, with the flowers that are there. Uh, the only thing I would say is that this is the same bottle everybody else uses. And that's, I mean, when I talk to a lot of the supplement guys, um, they, they use the same bottle. Is there a way to do it differently? That you is know, true. That's a, that is a valid point. Yeah. So if, I mean, if you could do something and it's very hard, it's not very hard, but like one of the things I've, I've talked to people about is can you blister pack it and what would that cost? And the reason why I like the blister pack, it comes in a straight a square box that fills up a thousand by a thousand. I mean that you can't get more square than a, than a, a blister pack. Um, and so, and I'm talking about the box that holds them. So you have a 90 count that might be in that, or it might be something else, but there are alternatives. And when you go to a supplement page, the supplement page, we talk about pattern interruption. Well, if you can right. do something different than that bottle, uh, that could drive people as long as the listing is good. Right. And it looks like whoever you used on this for the photography, it looks good with the lighting, you might want to bring in a bit more lighting there that is easy to fix through a graphic artist, but right. it really does look like a cylinder, which is nice. So that's really the only thing I say, I, uh, you know, I think 
Uh, you don't have to freak out about redoing your logo if you wanted to update it. And it, branding is always evolving, right? So right. maybe on the next run, you know, take a look at that. Well, and and trends change. You know, yeah. uh, again, it's 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 interesting because you know you watch you watch companies and you go through and it's just you know they change their logos because technology fonts you know the thing that the thing that worked in the 90s doesn't work now it it looks yep. it 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 was cutting edge in the 90s and now it looks amateurish you know right and and part of it was as things transferred over to computers right they was like wow we can do drop shadows we can do gradients we can do this we can do that and now it's now we're looking at it and all these logos are going back to just let's go back to simple because we went crazy trying to add all these special effects and glares and yeah you know 3d textures and all this stuff and now it's it's going back to more simple um and yeah like i i agree with your point about you know yeah if you can create a package that as people are scrolling they it stops them right yeah. oh wait what is this this is different just for no other reason than the package is different that's enough to get somebody to click on it because hey wait a minute i want to see what this is why is this different is this you know it, it's 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 a brilliant strategy and so um i think you're 100 percent right on that and it's that's great advice um and yeah uh, also as you're going through and you're updating things updating the packaging design to be more modern not only helps with that getting them to stop but it just keeps things fresh and everybody does it so you know you put new and improved type stuff on it of like hey we're excited to announce our our new our new label design you know yep. it's going back to the crm thing it's it's another thing you can announce of like hey we're really proud to announce we've updated our logo Ch you know go to our website and check out what we've done and it's it's a great way to do that. And I, like I said, I, I think Norm, you and I, you're a little bit less on the like scale with the logo than I am. But again, I think we're both in agreement of there's no need to panic. Yeah. You don't need sure. to. Yeah. You don't need to cancel the label. Stop the presses. We <laughs> no, <laughs> Mike no need. And, this Mike is, and Norm this said we got to fix this. Yeah. yeah. But there, there are, Two things I forgot to mention. If this is your primary image for Amazon, you've got too much white space. So fill the frame. If it's top to bottom, try to make that bottle reach yeah. the top so there's no white space. So it'll be the biggest, you know, if it's not the biggest bottle, it'll be equal to the biggest bottle. And one last thing, remember that uh, with this, this is a 3D rendering, I think. Um, you can, even if it's not, expand the logo because yeah. you you can do that it, it and you can you can like bring the logo down or alter it because it is a 3d rendering or you can take the logo and make it bigger why not make it wider so people can read it more now they're not going to look at it when they get it and go oh this doesn't match up exactly it's going to look exactly right. the same but it'll give them an easier way of reading it and right. even if you want to eliminate some of this stuff there, so it's a clean, you'll see this all the time on TV commercials. They sure. take off the white noise and they make it cleaner so people go, aha. Right. And um, you can do that with this. And I think that would be an immediate improvement. Um, just make it bigger so people can see it. So uh, yep. that's it for me. Yep, I agree. Okay. So we'll move on to the next one. Yep. All right. Okay, this is Energy Bud. So we have three different examples here. This is like a 3D version of the logo. Yep. We have just the regular logo and then the packaging for the logo. So I I I <laughs> I mean I, I'm so happy that I brought up the drop shadow right before I saw the logo with the drop shadow. <laughs> Yeah, they're doing crazy stuff like drop shadows. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> I, I honestly, though, I like the version without the drop shadow much better. I think the drop shadow, it's dated and it's too busy. Um, I like, 
I like the the kind of look. I'm assuming you know you got the lightning bolt over a bud or a seed, um, but there could also be a, a, a water droplet to cause that seed or bud to grow. So I, I like I like that storytelling. Uh, the font's easy to read. I don't think it clashes. I wouldn't mind seeing the the blue a little bit lighter, but I don't dislike the colors you've chosen. Could I? Could you? Would you mind scrolling down to the packaging design? Yep. So it's uh, just to give some context. It's like a plastic mold for desserts, so like chocolates okay. or candies. Okay. So it's a mold. It's not an actual candy. That yes, that's correct. Okay. It's for it's for chocolates. Okay. So I, I'd be curious to know where the, where the name comes from. I, I think it'd be interesting to hear the backstory of the name because I don't, I'm not, like if it was like energy candy, I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But if it's the actual molds, then I just don't know enough about it to get the correlation. I'm not saying there isn't one or you should change the name. I just, I don't know what it is. Um, I like the packaging design. Uh, I'd, I'd be curious to see it, to see kind of like a, a rendered sample or a photo sample, like we saw with the last product to see kind of how the box would look on a shelf. Cause obviously when it's expanded like this, we get to see all the sides, but we don't, we don't really get a good idea of what it would look like if, if it was sitting on the shelf or we picked it up and held it, um, which you see a lot of in Amazon of, you know, here's a picture of the box from the front. Here's a picture of the box from the back. Here's, you know, a three quarter view. Here's a, this, here's a, that I love when I'm looking to buy something online and I have a ridiculous amount of pictures because even if I'm not interested in half of them, I know it's going to have all of the information I'm looking for. And I'd rather scroll through too many than go, man, I wish there was a picture of this. So um, just for when you, when you do sell it online, pictures, pictures, pictures. I, I personally, my perspective is I love them. Uh, but back to the box, like I said, I like the colors. I like the way you have the reversed for the front of the box down at the very bottom on that tab, even at this small scale down version, like it says seven piece set. I can read everything, obviously not the fine print, but, you know, I mean, I can see the stuff that I'd need to see if I was standing across the store, if it was just looking at a thumbnail. Um, there's enough on it to make me pick it up and say, hey, like, oh, what does this say? I'm, I'm interested in this. So for me, I'm giving it I'm giving it the another yay thumbs up. Uh, you know, again, it's you clearly have the package design, so I wouldn't anything I might critique wouldn't be something that I would say, Oh my God, you got to fix this before you try to sell it. Okay. Uh, Norm, do you have any other points? I, uh, I don't get, uh, like you said, Michael, I don't get the energy bud. The, the so, brand. Um, I do have the list. Like I have like the Amazon listing and they do sell like energy bottles as well or um, water bottles. Uh, like I'm guessing like for like sports drinks and like hiking and stuff. So I think um, they're both under energy bud. Okay. So okay. I think it's um, the energy bud comes from like the water bottles and like going hiking and, and exercise. Okay. So we, we kind of niche. We talk about this. Uh, we've talked about it on the podcast and, um, I like talking about this subject about the brand. I wouldn't put under Soap Club my pet treats. Uh, this, this, like when we were talking about the energy, but I thought it was either going to be something you drop into water or right. something that's, you know, something to do with energy. It might be, and it's nothing that you have to rush out and do, but it might be a good idea to separate the brand. I don't get it. it you know, uh, yeah. if, you are, if you are selling, um, you know, water bottles or other energy type things, um, this might call for you to do, um, like to separate it. Just, just saying, um, just putting it out there because, you know, 
I, when he said it was a mold, I went, oh, okay, I, I get it. it's a mold, but I, I didn't understand the brand name. But uh, that's the that, like, that's the biggest thing I would say about this. Uh, the I mean, putting the four color um, like process imprint on the on the front, yeah, that's that's fine. I'd like, probably like to see it in the listing. Uh, Kels, do you have the listing? I do, so I can. Maybe we could just throw it up there for a sec. Yeah, and, and is hearing... that okay for with them though? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, yeah, and and here, and and hearing that addition of of what it is, yeah, I, I, I like I said, I that to me, I agree with you, Norm. That it confuses me because energy and bud, I'm thinking like supplements i'm thinking like oh this would be like super caffeinated chocolate or yeah you know something with like a green tea extract or something that's like energy based so i don't okay let's go back up go yeah, back yeah, up yeah. and go to that li their listing okay that's their page let's go scroll down one more and click there kels click on this listing okay Okay. The 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 picture is very clear by the way. That's Yeah. They did a good job with that. Okay, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the listing. I just wanted to see uh a little bit about it. So congrats on that first image. I think that's very uh, very well done using yeah. all the space, you know, you can showing the product. It looks like it's a quality um a quality image. But again, my, my biggest thing here uh, about critiquing this is I don't think it hits the mark with your other brands. You might want to consider if this sells a lot, you know, if you want to consider breaking this off and widening out that brand, you know, that side of the, the uh, molds or whatever you want to get into. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I can say right now. Yeah, and, and so there's a there's a question about um, separating brands and changing brands, and and so are you talking about specifically in accounts, or are you talking about the marketing of it? When with that question? Oh, sorry, I, I thought you were just answering a question here because I just I, saw Nathan's here. Separate yeah. brands is a great point. Brings up new challenges. Um, you can put a brand under your Amazon account, uh, or you can open up a new Amazon account, but you can definitely add multiple brands to your, your account. So like for me, I have my uh, one company and it has multiple brands under it. Now there is a challenge if you're going to go and sell that company. Um, so these aggregators or whoever's going to be buying your product or your company don't want to mix it up. So if they're saying, Hey, I want energy buds, but there's two brands in here to pull out the financials and to pull out all the information about that. Uh, they'll probably, it, it just makes things a little bit more messy. So you could do it. That's the simplest way. Just add another brand to brand registry and it'll be there. Or you can start another, and there's nothing wrong with starting a new Amazon account. Um, the only problem is if it's the same product, then you, you could get into hot water. Right. And then, yeah. and, and as for marketing, you know, I mean, Coca-Cola has, has Aquafina. So you can just say you can, there's various ways of doing it, but essentially you can be, um, you know, I don't know, let's just say cookie mold or, you know, cupcake mold or candy mold or whatever, uh, oh. a property of energy bud. So, there's there's a bunch of different ways you can do it you can not mention that they're connected um it really depends on how you want to set it up but yeah it's like i said if you if if people are confusing the brand because i know if i saw that sitting on a shelf now again thank you kelsey so much for pulling up the actual account because again it changes things because it made it obvious of like oh the first picture is clearly candy molds but if I was in a store and I just saw that box, Energy Bud and that picture that's on the box, my first thought would be, oh, this is some kind of energy candy. 
That's yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, so okay. and if you if anybody else has comments, I can't read them. Kelsey will, but if anybody else has comments, you know, put them into the comments sec uh, section. Okay, we'd love to hear um, from you. Great. So this is, uh, let me see. So this is from Cindy. She's trying to build a brand. Um, she's a housekeeper for thirty years and. The logo or the slogan is clean, simply smart. The pros know. And this is the picture of the packaging. Mm -hmm. By the way, I like that. I like that we're getting packaging on this on this yeah. round. Yeah, that's that's great. fun. Do you want to do you want to take this one, Norm? Yeah, I, I can start off. Uh, OK, so this one here. Uh, for me, I would reverse it out because of the colors that you have on the teal. Um, it's very hard and there's very fine stars. There's a lot of details in there. If you reverse it out, you could see it more. I, I had to increase it on my screen while well, I'm blind as a bat, but I wanted to see, you know, what, what that, and I think it's like a, um, a head scarf or whatever. Uh, I think that's what it is. I don't know what the name is. So. But um, I think that's what it is. But what you're saying down here, and I have to bring it clean, simple, smart. By using that type of font, uh, you... don't the the font isn't part of it. That, that's just the notes that I write. Oh no, no, I'm talking about that. that yeah, clean, simple, oh, smart. Okay. But if you if you if you're applying that to that font, that's not a simple font. And if you're clean, simple, smart, for me, brings up a clean, simple, smart logo. You can use this logo. It took me just a quick second to, to read what it was. Um, but my biggest criticism would be the reverse. A lot of the stuff that you're seeing there, like I couldn't see the TM, which is not a big deal. But if you, if you shrink that down to an inch by an inch, it's gonna be very hard to read. And if you go to the packaging for a sec, um, this packaging, it, it looks nice. It's a, and also, uh, this is very similar to what I was saying about the supplement. When you're doing something on Amazon, you can clean this up to bring out the colors uh, or to bring out the, um, the, the most important thing, the lavender, the, the logo, um, anything that you want you could bring it out a bit more because it's it could be just um, it's something it's a primary list it doesn't have to be exact but when you get your next run you might want to look at taking that teal and just if i'm thinking of really crisp and clean colors a crisp green and a crisp or blue or like a royal blue uh and this is just nitpicking but that, for me, would be a, a simple, clean wellness, nature. Right now, I mean, that's the trend in those colors. But this is fine. It's not something that I would panic over. Um, and, by the way, if I take a look at uh, Syntastic with the reverse, a, you know, I can read it now. Like, it looks better than the opposite with, with it on the white or on the teal. What about you, Michael? I, I agree with you about the reverse. And as soon as you said it, my thought was, yeah, because it looks better that way on the packaging. The one thing I would do on the packaging is I would make the logo a little bigger. Um, but this this is where this is where um, opinions mm -hmm. come in. I love this logo. The fact that your name is Cindy made me like it even more because like I get the, at first I was like, well, why C I N tastic? And then he's like, well, this is from Sydney. And I went, boom, there it is. I love the logo. I love the babushka. Um, it, you know, it's very, is retro. that what it's called? Is, it, is that it's, what it is? It's or... one of the things. Yeah. That's, that, I don't know. My grandma always, always wore babushkas. So, um, but like, it's very retro. It's very, um, what's the, what's the, um, Back in the World War II, the with the women, 
were working in the factories. I can't, I forget the name now, but it's, it's very reminiscent of that to me of, you know, like this, this retro look, this, I, I, I really, um, I really like it. I, I like the story that it tells. Um, the font is, is nice. I, I wouldn't change the colors. I think the colors are very welcoming. Um, the highlight of the purple that matches the, the flowers, the, like the, I think the colors are used well. There's a great flow in the packaging where I read it from top to bottom, other than just making the logo a little bit bigger. Cause I feel like, I feel like my eyes skip over it too fast. Like they don't stop on it long enough, but I, I'm a big fan of it. And, you know, for, for risk of having Norm send me an email, how dare you contradict me, which no, he never does that. <laughs> Uh, just uh, one more note. So it's uh, after Cindy, but also uh, Cinderella. Yeah, well. I, I, I saw that yeah. in the thing. Um, but I have to, I do agree though. Like there's, it's very little change on the packaging with the reverse out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that that logo does look uh, a thousand times better. Agreed. Agreed. But yeah, I I, I'm, I, I'm a big fan of it. I, I really, I really like that logo. Simon did uh, make a point that I could see. Uh, could the C be mistaken for an E sometimes? Do you think the C is clear enough? I, I mean, I I don't know. I, I I never once thought it said "intastic." You know, I, I mean, to me it to me it clicked. I mean, I guess it's possible, but again, that's that's a nitpicky thing. Where I I, I you know because one. It's the first letter of the name, so it wouldn't be a lowercase e because it's bigger. Right? It's bigger than the rest of the word, so it's clearly a capital letter. So, like to me, my brain automatically went to C. I mean, yes, there there might be some of that, but I don't know. I think I think the majority of people will see that as a C. Okay. All right. So next we have the saltito, which this is a chili lime snack seasoning. It competes with tahini, and it's just a couple months old at this point. Um, and we have an Amazon listing if you do want to see that. Can we? Um, okay. Just a second. Saltito. And are there other? types of seasonings or is this the first only the, the the first one to launch so i okay let me see actually i think this might be either the older packaging yep that he sent over um i just gotta stop my screen okay and... i do want to i do want to say one thing smart play matching both norm and my colors in your in your labeling on that previous label <laughs> All right, so I think this is the the newer logo here. See, they they look they got rid of the orange norm. Now they went they they changed your colors to blue. It's because what I said in the last, <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. They kept they kept my color though. <laughs> Man. Okay, so this isn't an Amazon listing critique. It's just I, we just want to take a look at what it looks like. Is that the primary image, by the way? Primary image, yeah. Okay. And I oh, I'm they, sorry. No, go sorry, ahead. Sorry, is that, is do they get a two? Uh yes, it says a two pack. Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. All right. What are your thoughts, there, Michael? Um. So. It's, this is going to be weird and convoluted, so I apologize if it doesn't make complete sense. So I like the layout of this 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 container that's on the Amazon ad. However, the logo is bland. I don't care about it. The logo on the last label I liked better, but because of the fonts that are on this new label, that logo doesn't fit. So if you if you wouldn't mind Kelsey scrolling back up to the previous logo, the one that was he was pulling out of the box. 
Yep, I uh, just I need to stop my screen. Michael. I've, I've, I've given you a huge undertaking, Kelsey. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then is the, that the logo below it? Is there, is there another? Oh, okay. This was, yeah, there's the I label. believe the old packaging for it. Okay, so I like that that actual logo, the Saltito, captures my eye so much more than the new one. I, I agree. That, but, that, that's, that, that logo uh, gives it a bit of life. Yeah. But the label itself, both, both labels, honestly, are very bland. The second label, the new label that's the blue and yellow, it fills out much better. Um, but it's nowhere near as fun. Like this one says, oh, you're going to have fun eating this meal. The other one says we're very serious about our meal. Now I'm not sure which one you're you're trying to get across. I don't know the rest of the brand story to say that it's the second one's more appropriate or the first one's more appropriate, but just by viewing it, I'm much happier looking at this first logo, the way the snack seasoning, you know, curves over the top. You've got the kind of the sparkles. And then, you know, the saltitos shaken up, you know, cause it's a, you're going to shake it onto your food. So it's kind of shaken. Like that's a lot of fun, but then the rest of the label, there's a ton of negative space that makes me go, I don't care anymore. And so, you know, that's, I get why you redid it. And I think you were smart to redo it. I just or wish. Because I, I, I'm still not sure if this is the one, Kelsey. Oh, who, that's the new one or the old one. I got you. Can we get that confirmed whether this is the new one or the old one? Um, yeah. So, uh, Stephen, if you want to reach out and give us context and let us know which one is um, the first one or the last one, but he did send me an email saying, okay, that. Uh, so, uh, Saltito branding that we are changing to, you can see. Oh, okay, so this is the new one, actually. This is this the new okay. one. Good, good, good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he changed it to be your colors. He's like, Mike's colors are good, but we got to get Norm's colors on there, too. <laughs> so okay, that changes great. it. So we, yeah, that, that logo, that works for me. Yeah. What does it say above it? Uh, oh, snack seasoning. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, chili lime. And I agree with you. I don't know what is missing, but if we go back to the actual bottle. Uh, yep. There, it's just a, there's just a lot of negative space that could be filled just, up. Yeah, something around here just feels a little plain. Because because the the top half is so exciting. It's it's very yeah. stimulating, and then the bottom half is not stimulating. And I think, I think that's where it's noticed is because you're like, yeah. Oh, and you need the bottom half of the label to also say, yeah. Yeah. I'm just wondering yeah. if it's something that you can do with that lime and the chili, you know, having I feel this... my Go first ahead. thought is like moving the chili lime with pink Himalayan salt down and then bringing up the low, the chili and the lime and expanding it maybe mm -hmm. and making that image bigger. Yeah. A lot bigger. Like switch the two. Cause yeah. Having the text above and then the small logo and then smaller little text below, I think it's giving too much space, but if you switch those and make it bigger, maybe yeah, it might help. Yeah, I agree. And the net weight, you could probably shrink down a little bit so that you can enlarge the chili lime a little, you know, cause obviously when you're looking at it, let's say on the shelf, you want that to grab your attention. Cause I'm assuming let's say there's different brands, right. Or not different brands, but like different flavors. So you'd have like maybe chili lime or maybe habanero or however you want to do it. I want to be able to say, Oh, this is the chili lime. This is the habanero. I want this one and pull it off the shelf even if it's online, it's still the same thing of, you know, cause you want, as soon as you click the picture, you don't want to have to click on three different uh, links when you type in 
saltito you don't want to have to go wait is this the chili lime or is this the chili yeah. lime or is this the chili like you want to know oh okay boom i see exactly which one this is right off the bat and and i think making that text bigger and then yeah you're 100 percent right kelsey make that make the chili and the lime as big as possible even if it kind of goes underneath where it's where the words chili lime because that overlapping will add some excitement. I, I just thought of something that might work as well. So in the supplement world, you, you a company might have five or 10 different types of supplements and they do exactly like you say, vitamin D might have orange for the sun or yellow for right. the sun. Uh, like a sleep aid might have like a dark black or a black or a purple or something right. like that. Well, I don't know what it's going to look like. It might have to take a little bit of revision, but if you could put a bar of orange, yep. uh, you know, across the chili lime, at least if you do that and you have another product or you have another product, just different colors, uh, all you d need to do is look at the bar with the name in it. And as soon as you saw, like, if you could right. say, oh, the bar is orange, this is chili lime, or if it's green or whatever, um, but if you're going to do that, you'd almost have to have a neutral color in the background because it would clash, but that's just a thought that's, you know, uh, I'd yep. love to play around with this actually. And yeah. Yeah. I do with. too. Cause, cause there's, like I said, there's a ton of negative space that there's so many different ways to fill with, like you said, with bars, with, you know, imagery with, there's a thousand different ways to do it because it is. And I, I forgive me, but it is simple. So, you know, like I said, if you look at the top, there's a ton of space between the top of the label and where it says, you know, where that, that the curved text is like, you could put a bar across there, then put a bar across the bottom where it says chili lime and you'd balance things out. I mean, there's just, there's, there's, there's multiple ways to play with this. Okay. That, and by the way, Michael, I just saw Simon's comment. If you did order a million labels, oh no, <laughs> no, no, oh so no! If, but if you did order labels, <laughs> oh no, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, you don't worry about it. You're not going to lose sales, and then you you would do it. But it looks like this is a 3D rendering, so uh, for the uh, label. So, anyways, um, sorry, yeah, Steve. It, <laughs> we could play around with this, and in fact, Stephen, if you uh, if you want to, reach out. Because I might get my art graphic artist to play around with it just yeah. to, just to see what we can come up with. I don't think it'll take a lot of work. And um, if yeah. you haven't ordered them, great. If you have ordered them, no problem. A brand's always evolving. And right. you nailed it with the logo. And that's what counts. Yeah. Okay. So we got two more. Uh, okay. Go Let's through. go through them quickly. All right. Oh, actually, three more. <laughs> um, so this is... I recognize this one. Yeah. We've done this one before. This yep. is from AMZ Elite. Um, so this arrow here is clear. This is a clear okay. window. Um, let me just go back. I have to... I forget exactly... He didn't say exactly what the product was. Right. Um but in terms of packaging, is there any comments? Looks like it's a, uh, you have to block out some stuff. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it looks like a chargeable, something that has Wi Fi um, for babies. A rechargeable it, baby? It's for That's nighttime. a great idea. But like for babies. Yeah, for rechargeable. Something like a. Wow. <laughs> it's not a rechargeable baby. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> Elon Musk will be coming out with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, soon enough. <laughs> um, again, this is one of those things of I, I, I wish we had a picture of the actual, even if it's just a rendering of the actual box uh, put together. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, because the, the, like you have the bleed here where the, the speckles are going off. So you don't get a good balance of stuff um, visually, but that being of itself, you know, it, it's, it's pretty interesting. 
I, th- for me personally, I would make the back of the box white where the, where that photo is. Um, cause when you turn it around, I'm not inspired. Like it doesn't grab my attention or at least I'm envisioning that it wouldn't. Um, yeah, so I think the the packaging isn't ready yet. So yeah. AMZ Elite just said that he'll send it to us uh, when okay. it's ready. Okay. Okay. But but you, I think you're right with the with the back. Uh, just changing the color so people can read it. Um, you've got a lot of instructions there. Um, so it just it's an easier read than having it on the uh, the blue. I you know what? If this is a nighttime product for babies. I don't have a problem at all with the colors. I don't have a problem with the stars. Uh, I mean, I, I think, I, I think you've nailed it. Yeah, and and I was going to say, I mean, you can't see the product, but you and I have both ascertained between the stars and the music notes. You know, it's it's pretty obvious what it is. I think, like I said, the information that's on the back, I think. I mean, obviously we can't read it because it's small, but I mean, I can, I can determine the flow. Um, I could see, you know, the kind of little bullet points that are down at the bottom of the box. You can feel the flow of like, Oh, if I saw this sitting on a shelf or if I saw a picture of it on Amazon or whatever, like I could, I can feel the flow of the front. I can feel the flow of the back. Like, Hey, here's a picture to grab your attention of this thing in use in case you had any question on what it's for. And then here's all the facts. So it follows It follows that thing we were talking about with the email, which is grab their attention, convince them to read it. And then if they're convinced, they'll read the entire thing. And, and it works that way with, oh, here's the front of the box. Interesting. Let me pick it up and turn it around and examine it. And when I flip it over to the back, now there's this picture. Now there's this text. And, and again, like we said, make it white. Because one, it's going to grab your attention more, and two, it is going to make it easier to read because you've got a dark blue text on a light blue background, and they blend, and my eye keeps wanting to go back to the front. And I think even if it was it's folded together, I'm still going to want to turn it back to the front because the front is more stimulating for my brain. Right. All right. So I uh, will move along to the next one. Um, so this one is from Laura. Um, this is her logo for her first brand, and she's looking um, to improve upon it and get it ready, uh, maybe change products in the future. But right now, it's uh, there's no definitive lane yet for her. Uh, she okay. has sold gift sets, novelty items, holiday gift boxes like coffee gift basket for coffee lovers, tea and cookie gift sets, novelty sock gifts. Okay. Um, you want this one, Norm, or do you want me to go first? Uh, I'll, I'll, t- I'll take a quick stab at this. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if the brand is called Pink Citrus Marketplace, um, or if, if it's just Pink C- Citrus, uh, if it's just Pink Citrus, uh, I would just continue with Pink Citrus, and I might, although the black looks good, uh, make the citrus... Uh, a citrusy color. Uh, even if you keep the marketplace in there, uh, it might just break it up a bit, but I do like the black. It's just that citrus, when I think of it, is, you know, either a, a, a yellow and orange, you know, one of those, uh, even a green, I wouldn't use green. Uh, I like the uh, the uh, flowers at the end. Uh, of course, the trademark would be much smaller. Right. Um, and then the pink uh, swoosh at the back. I mean, it just... It's very soft, very pastel-y. Um, the, the font seems fine to me. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I just, like, Pink Citrus Marketplace, that could work. I just don't know if I would change the citrus to a different color if, if it is Pink Citrus Marketplace. Yeah, she said, she said that it is, the Pink Citrus Marketplace is the whole name. Okay, so then... Uh, that changes things a little bit. I would change. Uh, the, my opinion would be, see what it looks like. Put it side by side, but pink and then citrus and then marketplace and black. Uh, it might look nice if it looks 
terrible, then switch it back to black, but just do a comparison and split test that. So get your artist to do that. Go to PicFu or go to Usability Hub, split test it and see what color combination people like. But the overall look and feel for me, except for the trademark, just make it the regular circle um, and much smaller uh, is fine. Yeah, I, I'm I'm in agreement with you. I my first thought was the TM looks like it's part of the word marketplace because they're almost the same size. Yeah, it's so just, that, that, that was, part's got to go. Like that that was like it's it was distracting to me. Yeah. Um. I agree. I feel like the pink, the pink swoosh, and the word pink should be the same color. Because the one's more, it's got a little bit more gray in right. it. Um, I feel like the balance between the black and the pink is uneven. It's heavier with the black. And so I like your idea of trying a third color to see if that'll help reduce some of that black. And then I'm curious, uh, I'm not a flower guy. So for all I know, those are citrus flowers. But I'm curious as to why it's not some kind of citrus there instead of the flower. But again, if it, if it is, you know, a citrus flower, then I'm just, that's not my expertise. So never mind that part, <laughs> but, but, um, you know, yeah, I like, I like the feel that it gives. It's very, it's gentle. Mm -hmm. It's comforting. The pink, the pink of the word pink really balances out the weight. So my eyes, keep going back and forth over it. So it starts at the pink, it goes to the marketplace and it goes back to the pink, then it goes back to the marketplace, which is what you want because I'm not staring at it right where I'm like fatiguing from looking at the same spot, but I'm also not drifting away from it because it's not interesting. It's it, it, it is, it's, it's good. Like I said, good balance. Uh, you know, like I said, just minor critiques. It, it's a clean logo and, you know, yeah. you could even try this, and I think this would work maybe even better than the flowers. Take the flowers out. Like just pink citrus marketplace might might work. It's nice and clean. Yeah, I think at that point though, you're gonna get you're just getting that that solid text, and I think you'd lose it. I I, I think I think there does need to be something there. I think that that image there balances it out. Even, you know, I, I like it. I, like I said, I, I like that. I'm just, I'm more curious as to what the flowers are. And if, again, yeah. if they are a citrus flower versus, you know, you can't put lemons cause those are sour, but, but you remember know. when you shrink this down to an inch or two inches, sure. you know, you, 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 You'd have to see those. Well, I, I and you check this out. Like you again, you split test it and see what would work. And I think it would work. I do. I do think. I do think those flowers will work shrunk down, because with the thinner lines, they, they'll fade out a little bit, and I think it'll stay balanced. Um. You know, I I, I do. I think, like I said, because they're not. They're not crucial to the logo, right? It's not like FedEx's logo or Baskin Robbins logo where that image is crucial to it. It's for me, it's it's this is something here to help balance it out, to help make it a little bit more interesting. Which is why you almost don't question the fact that it's well, the, it's just flowers versus, you know, an orange. Like balance wise, you don't question that. And so I think when you shrink it down, even if you lose quality in that actual image, I think that's okay because it's not, that's not the main focal point. That's, it's like an afterthought, if that makes sense. Okay. So I did uh, do some little research and I put in like citrus flower and I believe the, that's the flower of the citrus plant. Like, so well, there we go. Some orange. Then that is the flower. But I was. I know branding, not the... flowers. <laughs> it does look good. Hey guys, we got to wrap this up fairly soon. It's going on one thirty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We got one more, and then yep. we'll we can wrap it up. Uh, just I have to refresh. Um, 
my one note for it was I, I think of when I think pink citrus, either like pink lemonade or pink like grapefruit. So right. I don't know if those fruits would be better images for it. But anyways, um, here's uh, Twilight action. This was a logo that we had before, but here is yep. some new packaging. Yeah, I remember. So we that. have two images here. And this is the last one. I, I would make the logo bigger. Because there's there's enough space where you can kind of you can get a little bit more sky, move the hoop down a little bit, and still get everything to fit to make that logo a little bit bigger. Because my eye goes straight to the basketball, which isn't bad, but the last thing I go to is the logo. So I go I go to the basketball, then I go to the text above it, then I go down to the icons below it, and then I finally make my way back up to the logo. And, and even though the logo is also on the ball, it, it just, I don't, I'm not, I, I'd like to see it a little bit bigger just so you can say, Hey, this is the company that made this. Yeah. I, I like the packaging. Um, if we, a suggestion, I don't know. It might, I think it'll be a aesthetically correct is if you could push the basketball net over to the left and fill up the sky with the twilight action. Oh yeah, that's another way to do it. Yeah, that's a good idea too. That might work. So you're you, the basket you start at the basketball net which you can still see or your your uh, graphic artist can bring it out and then you can enlarge twilight action and and have it over in the sky. That's just an option, you know, but overall uh, nice packaging. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like the product too. Yeah. Yeah. The, the yeah the packaging is is really good. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll start wrapping things up now. Uh, we do have the giveaway, the wheel of Kelsey, so we can jump into that because um, <laughs> this is one of the longest uh, uh, podcasts that we've ever done. But I love it. This is. Awesome doing this with you, Michael. Um, Anytime. So, all right. So we're going to go, before we get to that, we need to do our song. Here is the Wheel of Kelsey. It's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. Here we go. So thank you everyone who uh, sent in their names and entered the Wheel of Kelsey. Uh, this is for the year membership with Michael. And here we go. Three, two, one. All right. The winner. Oh, perfect. Uh, Steven. There we go. Steven. Perfect. Congrats. congrats. Perfect. So con congratulations, Steven. Steven, congratulations. you can email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com. I have your email address actually so i can just send you the code so that works out perfectly and yeah awesome thank you everyone who sent in their logos um we really appreciate it and you guys made the show um yeah it's great seeing um our beer nation's member or our logos and everything and that we could help out okay perfect so michael as yes. usual thank you for coming on and thank you playing around with brands we'll it's, have to it's, do that again yes it is always a pleasure to be on the show uh, it means so much to me that you guys keep having me back and i i greatly appreciate it and i greatly appreciate your audience welcoming me and and listening to what i have to say and i i hope i've provided a lot of useful information and again i just you can't thank you do. enough you always do i'll have to have when dave letterman comes on you're back on <laughs> nice <laughs> nice <laughs> All right, sir. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Perfect. All right, everybody. So our guest uh, on Monday is going to be Yanni Kosminski, uh, Multiply Me. Uh, he's got a, a really great service for recruiting people. It doesn't have to be an Amazon person. It could just be uh, anybody you're looking to outsource to. Anyways, um, I've used this service. It's a great service, uh, the way that they go through the vetting process. Anyways, he's going to be on. He's going to be talking about it. It's just, it's not like going to Upwork and just, you know, finding a person. They 
get those 400 people down to 100 people, down to three, and present them to you. So it makes the hiring process very, very simple. But other than that, Kels, uh, what else? Other than smashing buttons. Yeah, smash those like buttons. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. This is a little different. We like This is just kind of like a fun uh, episode that's different from our other podcasts. Um, our other podcasts usually are more interview-based. But uh, this is, we do something special with Michael. And yeah, we hope you guys uh, enjoyed this episode. Um, check out our Facebook group, Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA and e-commerce collective. Also, if you would like to be part of our membership program, we do guest lessons. Michael was actually a speaker on as one of our guest lessons. Uh, I think it was last month, two months ago. Um, but yeah, really awesome. We also do small group sessions with me and Norm. Uh, where we do Q and A's. So if you're interested, check out lunchwithnorm.com and click on the membership button and that'll take you there. And yeah, our Beer Nation episode is next Wednesday. So we're gonna be meeting some of uh, the audience members or part of our community, the Beer Nation crew. So that's exciting. And we have our Kevin King episode also on Friday. So uh, yeah, that's it's gonna be a great week. Episode. Yeah, yeah, excited for it. Okay. All right. So join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon, Eastern Standard Time. And thanks again, everybody, for watching. It was a long one today, uh, over 90 minutes. <laughs> and I think that's one of the longest ones on record. Exactly. But uh, you know, thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of the community. Enjoy your weekend, and we'll catch you next week. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.